If you a veteran, tired of denying service connection The VSO ain't really helping, call A1 VA Raiders with profession Hey everybody and welcome back to the A1 VA Raiders show Today we have U.S. Air Force veteran Brock Bremer How you doing? Thank you so much for coming sir Likewise, thanks for having me over here Yeah, for sure So we're going to jump right into it Okay um, Where did you grow up? Uh, I've lived in Texas all my life. Uh, San Antonio's home, though. I've been here for over 20 years, although I've lived all over Texas myself. So, um, spent the last yeah two decades here in San Antonio. So this is my home. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. And how do you? 32. 32. Yeah. Oh, you're young. You're the same age as me. Yeah. Sweet. 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 So, um, growing up here in San Antonio, what was that experience like? It was good. I got to a point where I was just kind of, you know, working a lot, especially when I got to, you know, be 16. I started working here at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, and I just, from then on, just started working and uh, really getting to know a lot of more people around the town. Became friends with a lot of people over the years, and um, just through those friends, been able to kind of explore and like really get to know San Antonio. And uh, I still learn stuff about the city all the time. So yeah. it's yeah. it's been pretty good. Um, didn't get too crazy or too wild growing up. Pretty calm person. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of. And so when you were growing up as a child, did you know you were going to join the Air Force? You're like, you know, I'm going to join the military. Nope. What was your why? What was your purpose? Yeah, so I honestly had no intentions of joining the military until I got to about my maybe sophomore or junior year of high school. Um, around that time, my uncle had passed away and he was in the Marines. And so um, I kind of started thinking about it after he passed away. And I was like, you know what? Like, I need to carry this tradition forward because um, both him and my grandfather, both on my mom's side of the family, were both military, and I was the next male up in the family, and so I was like, I need to keep this tradition of being in the military going. So that was a big reason why. The other reason is like I was almost done with high school, and I didn't want parents to pay for school, so to go to college. So that was the big two reasons that I joined the military. And what was your job in, in the Air Force? So I'm a 2T2, that's my AFSC, um, so it's the Air Transportation Career Field, and we basically do logistics, so think of us kind of like the UPS or FedEx or like Southwest Airlines of the military. Military. So we put people and things onto planes and take them off and make sure stuff gets where it needs to be. Okay. And so did that job, FSA, help you uh, pick your career once you transition, once you decide to transition? So I was in the reserves, still am in the reserves actually um, to this day. And I didn't really have to transition out because I just had a civilian career the whole time, you know, that I was in. So I was always just kind of doing my own job, but I never, you know, in the military, that job is all logistics related. And I never did a logistics job outside of the military. So it's always been a different, you know, career field. Okay. And now you're straight real estate all day, 24 seven. Other than my reserve commitment. Yeah. Other, other than yeah. your reserve commitment. Yeah. So Brock, for our veterans that are watching um, at home, who want to buy a home uh, for their family. What does that process look like from start to finish, from the certificate of eligibility to closing day? Um, can you tell me a little, about the, bit about, bit, a little bit about that process? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, you know, one of the first steps is to get in contact with a realtor or a lender. Um, usually a realtor will have a number of lenders you can reach out to or vice versa, a lender has some. So reach out to one of them to kind of get the process started. You know, the first thing is really kind of for a lender to look at your financial picture and kind of see, you know, what's your debt to income ratio, um, which is like how much money you're bringing in versus how much you're having to pay out for your monthly expenses. Um, also just to kind of look at your credit score and you know any savings you may have so they kind of give you a, a solid idea of like hey you can go buy an X you know up to X amount on your budget um, that's really good for a couple of things one we know you can actually qualify for the VA loan which has a lot of you know qualifications there or rather a few good qualifications um, but two it also lets us know what your budget is so we're not looking at something that's way outside your budget and then we're crushing your hopes and dreams when we go look at something that's not what we've been looking at, right? So that's probably the first step is getting, you know, that pre-approval, approved qualification from a lender. And then after that, we can go start looking at homes. I mean, by this time, people have already been looking at Zillow and Realtor.com and all those websites at home. So um, we'll go look at some homes. You know, we may look at one and that may be it. We may look at, you know, 10, 20 before we find the one that, you know, is the house for you. So um, whenever we find that house, then we can start the making an offer, go through negotiations with the seller, um, we can dive deeper into that, you know, when it's time to actually make those decisions. Um, but after that, you know, once we're under contract, uh, after all the negotiations are done, then we are in escrow. And so at that point, the lender is 
you know, re-entering the picture and they're doing a lot of stuff on the back end to get the loan solidified and um, all that stuff. But while they're doing that, we're getting, you know, an inspection done. So a third party inspector comes through, look at the house, give you a solid report of the condition of all the major components and systems in the house. And then um, there's also an appraisal, you know, too, that's ordered by the lender to give an opinion of the val opinion of value on the home. Um, that's really important because lenders don't give more money than what, you know, the home was valued at by an appraiser. So um, that's really a key item as well. Um, but once we get through all of that fun stuff, then, you know, we get to closing day, which is the exciting day that you sign, you know, your name a hundred times on all the documents. <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, once you're all done, you get the keys and the home is yours. And so that's kind of it in a very small nutshell. Yeah, for sure. So with veterans, um, I've been told that your credit score doesn't matter. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Explain that because let's myth bust this <laughs> right now. Okay, because yeah. I, I, I talk to a lot of veterans, um, obviously, um, and they're like, man, I don't have a 620. I don't have a 700 credit score. Um, how does that work? Yeah, so um, a lot of the loan types out there, other than VA loans, they do require a minimum score of 620. In some cases, a 580. It really just depends on the loan product and the lender. Um, the VA guidelines, though, they don't have any rules on credit score. So if you have a terrible credit score, um, down in the three, four hundreds, you can qualify for a home loan. Now, unfortunately, not all lenders will actually give loans because some of the lenders will have their own overlays, meaning just their own rules um, that they can apply on top of the requirements there, and they'll have a minimum credit score requirement. But yeah, the VA doesn't care what your credit score is as long as you can, you know, financially afford a home. Okay, so debt to income ratio is extremely important. Is that like 35% of your income? You, you, so with the VA, if I remember correctly, there's not quite a strict number on you know the debt to income ratio. I know for like conventional and FHA, there's certain numbers in the you know mid 30s to low 40% range. Um, but with the VA, I've seen someone lenders go up to like 60% debt to income ratio, which is insane. So um, there are some lenders out there that have a higher debt to income ratio limit. And so as a, let's say we, I'm a hundred percent disabled veteran, yep. right? That's my only income. Um, what type of house or like, is there an amount? Like, would that be a $300,000 house? Could I afford a $300,000 house on a $3,400 a month income? I believe so. I mean, of course, I'm not a lender to tell you that specifically. Um, they'll give you that exact answer, but I don't foresee too many issues with that personally. Um, I've seen some people do it with very minimal income. And, and you know, that 100% disability rating, you know, depending on how many dependents you have is a considerable amount. And it's tax-free too, so that income, you know, if, you ha if you're single with no dependents, I think it's 3700 a little over $3,700 a month for 100% disability rating. And so that income is like you're working at a W-2 job making probably five fifty five hundred dollars $5,500 a month. So it looks a lot, it's a lot more um, on the lender side, uh, even though it's a smaller amount. Thanks. So no down payment. Yep. Credit score doesn't matter. Nope. No, um, is it mortgage insurance? Yep. PMI? That's PMI, that's private mortgage insurance. That's a, if you put less than 20% down on, you know, conventional loan, FHA loan, uh, it's a fee that you're charged every single month because you didn't put 20% down. It's like a little insurance coverage for the bank saying, hey, you didn't put 20% down. We want a little more to make sure we feel warm and fuzzy at the end of the day about giving you this loan. But with the VA loan, if you put 0% down, you don't have that PMI. So that right off the bat will save you a couple hundred dollars on your mortgage too. And here in Texas, 100% um, disabled veterans have a tax exemption, yep. which completely in eliminates their property taxes, yep. which is a, a significant amount of money, right? Uh, that could be like six, seven hundred dollars a month. How, how? I mean, is that real? Yeah, that's real. I actually helped a veteran back in um, October, November timeframe of last year. Uh, he was 100% disabled um, Navy veteran. And he ended up buying a brand new house from a builder. It was a four bedroom, three bath house. Um, I think the price was about 370. And we got him some really good incentives and stuff from the builder too, but his final payment um, was like $1,800 a month because he was tax, tax exempt. Wow. I mean, that's a life changing benefit. I mean, that's like a lot of extra money. You can send your kids to Cornerstone uh, yeah. to private school if you wanted to Absolutely. Uh, with that tax benefit. So that's, it, it's life changing. Definitely. Um, what are five uh, um, recommendations or what advice would you give someone looking to buy a new construction home? To buy a new one? Um, I would just say do research on the different 
builders out there because they're not all the same, right? Uh, they may look very similar on the outside, but sometimes, like I've seen one builder in particular, they do spray foam insulation on the roof, which can significantly help you save on your, your energy bill. So like not every builder does that, uh, but this one does. And some of them, um, another thing too, is some of them will allow you to do some sort of customization with the house. Uh, some of them, a lot of them unfortunately don't let you do too much picking and choosing. They kind of just build something and what you see is what you get. Um, cookie cutter. Yeah, <laughs> some of them are very cookie cutter, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's one thing too is, and some of them too are pretty good as far as letting you build from the ground up and choose, you know, from a slew of options. But for the most part, you kind of get to choose package A, B, or C. And those packages have just different colors when it comes to the flooring and like the tile that they choose for you. So um, that would be another thing. Um, also, um, builders, some, this is one thing that people don't realize is builders are willing to negotiate. They usually see whatever price is advertised, you know, as the sales price, like they think that's all they can do. Um, but in reality, especially right now with the higher interest rates and homes sitting longer, these builders are willing to take offers. So you can make a pretty competitive offer and not just on price, it can be also on the incentives, which is another thing um, that people overlook is sometimes um, these incentives from builders, like if you don't ask, like they won't give them to you unless, you know, they're advertising it. Right. So um, I've seen some people get, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars off the price of the house plus all of their closing costs paid plus appliances, which normally you don't get appliances other than like your stove and microwave and dishwasher. So it's really good to see those kind of things as well. So all good things to keep in mind. So pros and cons, new build or uh, a pre-existing home. What do you recommend? If you were if you were going to buy a home right now today, what would you choose? I would choose new construction. Why? Um, right now with the higher rates, the builders are the builders are giving much better deals overall um, on homes with all those incentives that I just mentioned. Um, they're willing to negotiate on price, pay down your closing costs, buy down the interest rate as well, uh, and even give those appliances. So it's really nice to get that. Also, I really like the fact that it, everything's brand new, right? If you walk into an existing home, you have no idea what problems may or may not exist um, other than what the inspector looks at and only they can see as so much as well. So it's really nice to know that everything is brand new. You get a warranty on everything. Like it's, uh, you know, the first year is kind of like a car bumper to bumper warranty, like just about anything and everything that could go wrong, like they'll fix. And then of course it changes, you know, for year two and up to year 10 as well. But um, it's really nice just having that peace of mind that everything's new. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And I also agree with you as well. Yeah. I, I definitely want to be the first person in my home. Yep. <laughs> it, it's just a feeling <laughs> that it's just an unbelievable experience. What are the top neighborhoods to live in here in San Antonio? Top neighborhoods? Top five. Um, actually, yeah, I need to make a video on this for my, myself. But, uh, <laughs> um, I've actually really liked like the Stone Oak Timberwood Park area. I'm a little bit biased because that's where I grew up when I first lived in San Antonio uh, up there, but I really like those areas. Um, top rated school districts, uh, they've got a lot of amenities in all of those neighborhoods. Um, um, where was I going with that? But yeah, I mean, overall, it's just a good neighborhood. Like again, I'm biased because I live there. I know a lot of folks are moving out to like Bernie as well. The, again, top rated schools, lots of stuff out there. It's a little bit further away from San Antonio, but people really liked it seem to like Bernie for all of the small town country feel that it's got. Um, and then also New Braunfels, that place has been exploding. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I see a lot of folks moving to New Braunfels because you've, you've got Schlitterbahn, which is the world's largest water park. You've got, you know, the river to float down in the summer. You've got, um, what's the, it's Worstfest, yeah. Worstfest in uh, the fall. So it's, you know, it's got a lot of stuff. And it's also really close to San Antonio. Good deal. Yeah. And so real quick, last question. Uh, while you were in the Air Force, you deployed to Qatar. What was that experience like? It was um, interesting. It was my first deployment, uh, first time being on the other side of Earth um, from, <laughs> from my family and friends and everything I knew. Um, but it was one of those places where, you know, it was very hot, very humid, <laughs> um, working, you know, all the time, 12 hours a day, didn't really have much time, uh, you know, and at, at, the, at the end of the day for things. But um, it was a good experience overall. I made, met a lot of people from all over the United States. Um, it was just incredible to kind of be in like a, a mix of different people, um, and just to, to meet new people. I don't know. Did it change your perception of what the Middle East was like from what you've seen on TV? It did, yeah, because, I mean, during some off time on the days that I did have off, I could actually go down to, you know, the city nearby um, and kind of experience the culture. So it was good to go eat at some local restaurants and, ex you know, just have that experience out there because, you know, living in the United States my entire life, I had never really had that culture experience. I mean, I, I went to Australia when I was a kid, but it's, it's very similar to the United States. Um, but going to the Middle East and like going to a mall and then hearing their call to prayer um, for the day, that was interesting. Yeah. Um, and how everything just shut down for that time. 
Um, it was also just very interesting to see the amount of wealth over there because there's a lot of yachts <laughs> and, and nice cars and everything nearby. So it was very interesting to kind of see how other folks live in you know, a different culture and different environment. Yeah. Well, you got it, guys. That is Brock Brimmer with EXP Realty, United States Air Force veteran. We're going to wrap this thing up. Thank you. Make sure you guys check out his YouTube channel, Living in San Antonio. Like, subscribe, follow. <laughs> Thank you so much Absolutely. for coming, bro. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Are you tired of getting denied for the increase in your disability rating that you deserve? Contact A1 VA Ratings, 210-668-6065. Serious about veterans, serious about results.